Hi, I'm Danny Gregory. I'm a creative person. And I, I think about what that means a lot. We, we creative people, we have special kinds of problems, special kinds of, of thoughts that swirl around in our heads. And coming up with ways of dealing with this special way that we think and live, well, that's what I write about and what I make videos about, like this one. And I hope it's helpful. Today, I'd like to talk about what being creative means, why we're creative, and whether it's worth it. <laughs> I've been pretty creative most of my life. Uh, I've always liked making things and learning various kinds of skills and coming up with new ideas. But why? What's made me this way? Why? Why am I creative? And as I try to answer this, maybe you'll get some insights into why you're creative or, or maybe why you think you're not. But maybe you do have the makings of being a creative person too. So let me tell you a bit about my childhood because you know, like Freud would say, maybe that's where the answer lies. So at first, my childhood was fairly typical. I was born in London. My parents got divorced when I was about two or three. And then my mother hooked up with an American mathematician and we moved to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And a year later, we moved again, this time to Canberra in Australia. And then my second stepfather entered the scene and then I was shipped off to my grandparents in Lahore, Pakistan for a year or two. <clears throat> and then we moved to Israel and we lived on a kibbutz. And finally, when I was 13, we moved to Brooklyn. So by the time I'd finished college, I had gone to almost 20 schools. I spoke four languages and my mother was divorced for the third time. So pretty typical. <laughs> but I grew up without a lot of stability and I expected the world to just keep changing without ever asking me my opinion or how I felt about it. Now, your life may not have been quite so tumultuous or exotic, but you probably had changes in your childhood too. So is that it? Change? I mean, it was certainly a factor in my case. How do you cope with change, right? You observe and you adapt. That's how you survive. I mean, and I spent my childhood being dropped into different schools and different cultures and different languages. And I had to learn to fit in by observing what all the other kids did and, and said and how they dressed and what they were into. I had to be observant and I had to be creative. And I also spent a lot of time around adults trying to figure them out. I mean, adults were super mysterious and random. So I had to use my powers of observation and imagination a lot just to explain their behavior. And I also felt other, like an outsider, like an alien most of the time. And a lot of people feel that way. A lot of creative people do particularly. Like everyone else is on the inside while we press our noses against the glass. But again, being an outsider makes you more observant and less prone to stereotyping too. You can't take stuff for granted. So you become more sensitized. And eventually you might just give up on fitting in and just start to forge your own identity. And that's a great act of creativity, right? You can't just take an identity off the rack. So you have to learn to make your own Despite trying to fit in, 
I was a pretty lonely kid and I spent a lot of time reading. I wrote stories, I, I illustrated them, I made up songs, I drew maps, I, uh, I acted out scenes, and I played all the characters. Um, I set up a lab full of test tubes and I took radios and motors apart and I love building secret hideaways and, and I made up characters in my head sort of these, these imaginary friends. And my imaginary friends were usually calm and gentle, uh, all-knowing adults. And they would go with me on these long journeys, you know, or they had big ancient manor homes steeped in tradition, sort of like Gandalf or Obi-Wan Kenobi or Balu the Bear, but with a bit of Downton Abbey <laughs> blended into it. There's probably a genetic aspect to, um, to my creativity also. I mean, there were creative people in my family, but I didn't really know many of them um, particularly well or even firsthand because of all these divorces and moving around and stuff. Like my father's brother, he was a movie star and then he was a pop star and then he became a potter or maybe he was a pop star. And then, anyway, he was pretty creative, but the family didn't really respect him very much because he usually failed at all these things and they generally ended up having to pay his rent. Um, my mother's brother, the, he was a minor author, and um, we had all of his books on a prominent shelf, and I thought that was super impressive to have your name on a book. Um, my father made his living in business, but I heard that he also made paintings, and, and every so often he would send me a photo of one of them, and they were these sort of strange, angry, faraway paintings, kind of like my father. Uh, my mother, she had beautiful handwriting and, you know, she was sort of a groovy chick, I guess creative. Um, her mother was a doctor, but she had a, a really green thumb and she loved to, to garden, which is also sort of creative. Um, so there was some creativity running through my family, but it wasn't really taken very seriously. And, and my childhood creativity, uh, all this running around and being characters, that was pretty much taken for granted. It wasn't, it wasn't something that anybody got really excited about or praised me for. I mean, I guess it wasn't really encouraged or suppressed. But most of the adults around me were busy with their own lives and they were perfectly happy if I just sat up in my room drawing or writing or talking to myself or whatever I was doing up there. So I think I value creativity so highly because it kept me sane, honestly. It saved my life amidst all this crazy energy and change and destruction and indifference and I don't want to say abuse, but close to it. And I've spent a lot of my life trying to protect my creativity to my own and, and other people's too, because I think it's likely to be devalued or dismissed or viewed with skepticism by the world. Or, on the other hand, it's overvalued, hyped, put on a pedestal, um, made other, instead of just being a normal, everyday part of a normal, balanced life. Creativity helps us to deal with change. It helps us to maintain control, to solve problems. It's how we take all the wisdom that we glean in life and build upon it recombine it, make it fit our situations and move us ahead. It's not magic. It's the skill that we all have and maybe we just give it other names. You don't have to call yourself an artist to be creative. You just have to solve the problems that life serves up in the best, most authentic ways that you can. And to me, that's the true meaning of being creative. And we all have this in us, but we do so many things to sabotage it. We worry about what other people think, about how we'll make a living, about whether we're any good. And we end up giving up a lot of the time, giving up on creativity and just, I don't know, getting a job in a bank or an office or something just so we can pay the rent. It's sad, especially because our creativity is this secret power. It's this weapon that can help us 
to survive whatever it is the world is going to throw at us. You know, and I've ended up thinking a lot about that little kid that no one was looking out for, who was easy to dismiss or to ignore. That, that I should put some energy into looking after that little kid and making sure that he's okay. Giving him crayons, letting him know that what he does is cool and valued and, and supported. And that it's important to my feeling happy and well-adjusted and, and not lonely and a miserable failure. I'm creative because I've let myself be. Because I see what it can do for me. And I refuse to let anyone else make me think that that's a problem. You have this little seed in you. And it can improve your life in so many ways. But you have to nurture it. You have to feed it. You have to work it. You have to protect it from the stupid, careless, destructive opinions. The, the ones that are out there and the ones that are in your head. You can do it. I know that you can. Look, thanks for watching this. I hope it was helpful. And here are a few other easy things that you can do to support your creativity, okay? One, subscribe to this channel, and then you'll know the next time that I make a video. And I do a couple of them every week. And two, get my newsletter. I write an essay every Friday that's kind of like this video, only in words, in an email. And people seem to like getting it, maybe because it's free. And three, watch another video. Thanks very much. See you later.